And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sorry you can't see me very well. It's um, 11.29 a.m. I'm on my second one of these. If anybody can help us with cleaning this apartment, we would be deeply appreciative. We need the help. We spent the night in the emergency room. I mean, look, I don't like... You know, there's personal information, and I'm putting it out there. You know, I mean, like, the last video was for our daughter. But, you know, she was worried. She was, I, you know, if you only knew the anxiety that we both have right now, my wife and I, my wife especially. And to be honest with you, I think my wife is very strong. I think she's actually handling this very well. But it's 11.30 a.m. We spent the night in the emergency room. And they were busy. They were busy in the emergency room. They had people constantly coming in. Uh, I heard at one point over the radio at a 45-year-old unconscious, not responsive, uh, I think that's what they were saying. I'm hard of hearing, so you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. And before that, you know, my wife, for the most part, sat in the car. But um, I did some cop blocking in Keene, and I want to, I want to tell you guys that I thought you were very professional. Um, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, but I thought you were very professional, and I respect that a lot. Uh, I respect professionalism. I respect... I don't even... I, I just can't think of the, the, the words right now. I mean, I am so tired. Uh, I don't think I've slept in 24 hours. And, you know, drinking two stouts, two pints... I guess it are pints, I don't know. A stout is the only thing I actually like to drink. I don't like anything else. If my wife didn't mind me smoking weed, I'd smoke some weed. But she doesn't want me to do that, so I don't do that. My wife's in bed asleep. Hopefully she's asleep, because she needs the sleep. She needs the rest. Gosh, does she need it. essentially two biopsies in the period of a week we took Lucky who's in my lap right now he t we took we took him with us last night and he stayed in the car of course <laughs> not, they're, not, not, they're not gonna let him in the ER when my wife went through her second biopsy they had a it was very nice I mean it, it was very it was very nice they this lady came through and she said they uh, she had a therapy dog, and of course, he smelled the cat. But um, he was, you know, that was good. She said, "Anybody want to see a therapy dog?" And we're like, "I said yes, my wife would." And um, I mean, I'm doing my best to stay strong right now, and it's not easy. I don't know if you, how how well you can see me, but you know, and and this is something that that I I want to say to the fake atheist especially. You know, my wife is a person of faith, and I I was once too, you know, and I didn't become an atheist overnight. 
it took a long time because faith, religion, God, gods were such were so ingrained in me. And you know, and there's there are some things that you know, some of my beliefs haven't changed. I'm still pro life, I'm anti death penalty. Those haven't changed. It's just my arguments for them have changed. Um But my, you know, my wife went to church last night. I'm very, I'm glad she did because it probably helped her. Um, you know, I'm not, you, you know, I'm not. I mean, I'm not the one. I'm not the kind of person that's going to attack a person of faith. I don't see the point in doing that. I think it's stupid. Now, I, I when I first became an atheist, uh, yeah, I, I I definitely did that, but. Uh, you know, I don't do that anymore. Uh, and part of that has to do with, with, with looking back and seeing how important religion was in my life at one time. For most of my life, as a matter of fact. And I tell you, any anybody who's going to try and attack my wife, you, you better have the guts to come up and face me face to face because I'm going to put a 40 in your face. I'm going to shove it in your mouth. Um, but I'm glad she has something to rely on, you know, like emotionally. Because I don't think I'm doing a very good job. I just, I just, I don't know what to do. I feel at a loss. She doesn't deserve this. She deserves much better than this. She's had a hard life. And it's nobody's business, all the details of that, but she's had a hard life. I don't want her going through this. There's no point in her having to go through this. Well, there's a point in everything. I mean, you know, to a large ex extent, I'm an existentialist, you know, and uh, I see a reason behind everything maybe I need to start looking at it from that perspective maybe I need to pull out a uh, man's search for me by Dr. Frankel and see if she'll go ahead and read it uh, she may have read part of it I gave her another book by Dr. Frankel but it, 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 it's it's not up everyone's alley and um, I, I think man's search for meaning right now would, would mean a lot to her. Especially since my, my wife is a, is a person of faith. And Dr. Frankel also believed that religion or faith or whatever uh, could have great meaning. And he believed it was necessary in a person's life. I, of course, don't. But, um, you know, whatever emotional support you know I should have gone to church with her last night I've gone to church with her before I mean it doesn't mean anything to me but uh, it means something to her and I need to be there for her now I didn't know how long she was going to be there but, you know, nonetheless I should have gone I should have gone I was a butthead for not going. I don't. I. 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 I don't know what to do for it right now. You know. I, I think like some people in all recipes said. You know, a support group, and and one of the ladies on 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 there said, um, you know, she's been through this. You know, getting the emotions out, crying yelling, stomping the feet, whatever, whatever my wife needs to do, she needs to do, and I'm going to support her. I'm not going to say that I'm going to understand or like it or whatever, but I'm going to support her because she needs the support.
You know, one thing that always helped me a lot was listening to John Denver. Because when I was, um, we first moved to the United States, and I understand, I'm not from the United States. You know, I, 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 w I was born and raised in the third world. Um, and, you know, Spain was, you didn't drink the tap water, literally. And um, a lot of other things I won't go into right now. But um, you want socialism, you want communism, you want fascism, it's all the same in the end. Believe me, that's not what you want. Just think you want it. You don't know what it really is. I do because I've lived it. I was going to say no. We, we were able to get my wife some of her medicine, but gosh, she is so, her anxiety level is so high. And I understand having high anxiety, or, you know, uh, but uh, I hope the medicine she took actually went down and she didn't throw it up. I have the kava kava over here. She can have some kava kava. If that'll help. I mean, I, I don't want her to damage her liver or kidneys or anything like that. You know, we need somebody to help us clean up because we can't do this by Thursday. There's no way we can do this by Thursday. She has health issues far more significant than myself. But I also have health issues. Yeah, I'm going to take my meds and go to bed in a little bit. We both need to find a support group. I need a support group for spouses. She needs a support group for people going through this. If I, it, look, if I could take the cancer, if I could have the cancer, I would take the cancer. I would take it all on my shoulders. I don't know if there's a way to do that. If there's a way to do it, I'll take it. I'll do it. I'll do whatever I have to do to make her healthy again. I'm glad she has the courage to do what she is doing. She's very brave. She's very strong. There are a lot of people out there who would get the diagnosis and try and pretend that it's not there. Okay, period. She's not doing that. She's facing it head on. And for all the rest of you out there who have had or have breast cancer, I, I, I want I want to clarify something I said in, in one or more other videos. Yes, you can defeat. You can win. You can defeat the cancer. And what I mean by that is you choose how you live your life. You choose your outlook on life. Okay? You Before you is a forest. It's how do you look at that forest? Do you see all the different shades of green, browns, black? Do you see all the different shapes and shadows and movements? Do you hear the way the things sound as the breeze blows through? Or do you see a dark, dank, evil place? What do you see there? You have two people, a positive person and a negative person, looking at the exact same thing. And the positive person sees a million beautiful things. The negative person sees only one awful, ugly, horrible thing. I want her to be that beautiful person and she is that beautiful person 
and I want her to see all the beauty there is in front of her. She's strong. I feel bad that I I feel like I pressured her into you know getting the mammograms and all that kind of stuff. But in the end she still had the choice of saying no. And she's choosing to follow up with everything. And I'm glad the doctor the, the doctor in the ER gave her a script for I think Ativan uh, or something like that. Uh, you know, anti anxiety are we have the same medical doctor and frankly our doctor needs to give her a script for I don't know if it's Ativan but you know something for the anxiety because my gosh We need help cleaning this place and organizing and sorting. And we're going to need help moving the stuff in the basement because there's no way we can. First of all, there's no way she can do it because she's had two biopsies, two sets of biopsies, because each biopsy was taking samples for more than. It was taking more than one sample. I mean, I have physical issues, I have health issues, but not the kind that she has. So I can do more than she can do right now. But we don't have any help. I don't know, I feel bad asking anybody for help. And a lot of the people we know, I think they would say, well, you know, you pay me 20 bucks an hour. We don't have 20 bucks an hour to pay you. We don't have 20 bucks. We don't have a buck, you know. Um, I don't know how we're going to survive. I just don't know. Hopefully she's sleeping. Hopefully she's having a good sleep right now because all night in the ER. <sighs>